This morning, you got your Bibles, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, begin at verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. I'll read again. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us, us richly all things to enjoy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach your word. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay, anoint the hearers to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man's need for God is the title. Man's need for God. I recently heard a testimony at church. I really liked what the man said. It's sad but true. He told how this man he was witnessing to said he didn't need God. That's sad when a lot of people will tell you he's not the only guy. I mean, there's a lot of people, men and women, black and white, red and yellow, rich and poor, middle class, American, uh, British, or whatever, whatever nationality. It doesn't really matter. You'll find people worldwide who'll tell you they don't need God. I got news for each and every one of them this morning. We all need God this morning. We all need him more now than we ever have. I believe that as we see the day approaching, and I believe the second coming of Christ is at hand, I believe any time now Jesus could come, I believe we're going to need God even more as we see that day approaching. This morning, we all do need God, each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Why do you say that? Well, number one, God is our creator. Did you know you were created by God? Now you say, now, Brother Roy, I just come here as an accident. Well, you know, I know that people feel that way. In fact, I've actually felt that way at times. But I am not an accident. I am a creation of God Almighty. God is the one that gave me breath. Amen. He's the one that put blood in my body. As it says in Leviticus 17, 11, the life of all flesh is in the blood. I'll tell you this morning, he's the one that gave us blood. He's the one that gave us life. He is the one who... Breathe the breath of life into us, as it says in Genesis 2, 7. You realize if it hadn't been for him breathing the, the breath of life, we wouldn't be living. If we didn't have the blood, we wouldn't be living. This morning, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, according to Psalm 31, 139, I mean verse 14. I do not believe any of you here are here by accident. I don't believe there's any one of us who hear by accident. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us this morning as his creatures or as his creation. Sad, the vast majority of us will not follow his plan. But see, because we, he created us, we really need him. We need him to, to give us the breath, the oxygen we breathe in and and blow out. As my friend the late Dorman Phillips said, every, every, we need to be thankful for every, every uh, breath of oxygen we breathe in and blow out. I'll tell you what, that's a good way to put it because we do need to be thankful for everything he does. We need to be thankful for the fact that he's given us water in fact, he's given us food. Yes, I know there's people starving worldwide. I believe that's why he's rose up the church, by the way, to help the poor and the needy. Some people say, oh, that's the government's job. No, it's not. 
Let me just briefly tell you, the government's not here to feed us people. I promise you that. You know what it's really here for? To protect us. I believe it's a church's job to reach out to the poor and needy. As I've often heard it said, it's hard to reach me with reach a person with the gospel while their bellies growl in pain. I believe that's why God has sent the church. That's why I'm thankful for groups and organizations that are reaching out to the poor and the needy in their community, trying to make sure they have food to eat daily. I appreciate that a lot. But this morning, He created us. We are His creation. We're not here accidentally. I believe each and every one of us, God has a purpose for. It's up to us to find out what His purpose is. Amen. I remember when I was first saved. I was at a, this breakaway night at Davis and Elkins College. Boy, that was years ago. There was one guy in particular I was talking to that night, and we were, you know, as we were doing the games and stuff. This guy told me, God put you here for a reason. <laughs> you know what? He's put each and every one of us here for a reason. You know, even though I was new in the faith, there was still a lot of struggles from my past where, you know, I felt very inferior a lot of times. But thank God, I am a creation of God. Not only that, but I'm one of His children. Amen. By faith. By faith. I wasn't born into the world of the child of God. I was actually born into the world of the child of the devil. But one day, on December 7, 1978, I was born again. Amen. And I had a new father at that moment. And when God is my father. Amen. And another reason why we need God. Our personal sinfulness. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> King David when he was confessing his sins of Bathshe with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah the Hittite, in Psalm 51, he said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He recognized that he was born with that sin nature, with that sin principle. He realized he was born in the world a sinner. Amen. He needed God to be forgiving him. He needed God's mercy and God's grace at all times. He knew what, what a sinful man he was without God. And we're all sinful people. We're born in sin and trespasses. We've all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Like how one preacher said, Romans chapter 3 is... The biography of every man. You realize we have all sinned? Let's go to Romans 3. I'll just go ahead and read chapter 3, verse 9 through 20. Real fast, and then I'll get right back to the message. What I'm trying to point out. This is every man's biography. Pardon me. Ah, uh, pardon me. Romans chapter 3. Beginning at verse 9. Verse 3, verse 9. What shall we, what then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they're under sin, that they're all under sin. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used to seek. A poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction, misery in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know 
that whatsoever things the law saith, saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and the all and the whole, all the world become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. And drop down three verses once again. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That's each and every one of us. That's why we need God. Because we're sinful beings. Another reason why we need God. The reality of hell. This man not only told this guy that he uh, didn't need God, but he all talked like he almost wanted to go to hell. I like what the late Dr. Robert L. Sumner told in his track, Heaven Can Be Yours. I'm sure, you know, at the time he wrote that, it was the only person, but I'm sure he has had, deal he had dealings since then with people who... Uh, who said the same thing, but I like what he said. He said this man, a prisoner in, in Livingston, Illinois, told him once that he really wanted to go to hell, and he meant it from the heart. Within three days, he was in an insane asylum. You know what I believe? I believe it's insanity to want to go to hell. Hell is real. It's a place full of torments. You read Luke chapter 16, 19 through 31. You'll find today that it's a place of torments. It's a place where they feel the flames of the fire of hell for eternity. They can't even get a drop of water to drink. They still got all their senses. They can taste. They can see. They can feel. They can hear. I believe hell is a horrible place. And there's many people going there tonight. I believe it's literal fire. I don't believe that's just a figurative. For uh, like I think one preacher said one time, it's just uh, people having that, that fiery desire for God for all eternity. No, no, no. They're going to suffer physically in the flames of, fire, of hell forevermore. You say, now, Brother Roy, why do you preach on hell so much? Number one, Jesus himself did. Our Savior preached on hell more than he ever preached on heaven. And he preached on the love of God. In fact, let's look at the main verse on the love of God. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish perish as a referral to hell right in the golden text of the bible this morning i believe hell is a real place <clears throat> and there's many going there many who trusted in their riches many who thought well i i, I haven't made in a shade drinking lemonade all expenses paid but you only found out that you was in need of an aid i remember this preacher doc the reverend reverend Ro Robert L. Lowther. He was one time my pastor years ago. He used to be a truck driver for a living as well as preached for years. I'll never forget this one story, and I may not be telling it 100% right, but one night, him and the man he was driving with were at a truck stop eating a meal. They was with another man, his buddy. They were there talking. This man at the table who's driving the other truck, he was there boasting how he could buy just about anything he wanted to on credit and have it paid off like that. That's how well he was doing. I think he invested money in stocks as well as drove a truck for a living. It looked like he had it made. He talked like that's why he didn't need God. I got news for you. The riches are uncertain. Riches have a way of taking wings and flying away. I tell you something this morning. Uh, trusting in your riches is not going to get you anywhere. <clears throat> you may say at the white throne judgment, Lord, I built churches in your name. Great. 
Were they Bible-believing churches? Even if they were Bible-believing churches, <clears throat> where Jesus Christ was proclaimed, sin condemned, the blood of Jesus Christ was proclaimed, and salvation was offered to those who heard. Even if it was a doctrine in that sound church, if all you do is trust in your riches, he's going to say, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. That man and his buddy, the other guy, went out and got his, their truck and they took off. A few minutes later, Reverend Lowther and that guy he was riding with got in their truck and took off. I think there was about 10, maybe 20 minutes behind the other people. I forget, really. It's been years since I've heard that story. In fact, if anybody out there knows how to tell the story better than me, why don't you text the story to me today at 540-660-9277 because I'd like to get more exact when I tell it. Anyway, they drove on down the road and finally, Reverend I noticed in the distance it looked like the sky had turned red as though there was an explosion or a fire. I think he turned to his man and said, you know, I think somebody's in trouble. They drove on a few more miles and finally they came to where the policeman, you know, was guiding traffic because there had been a severe wreck. <laughs> finally, as they were starting to pull, drive close to the policeman, the policeman saw the truck company that Reverend Lowther was driving with. And when they saw it, they stopped him and ordered him to pull over. It happened to be the accident happened to involve the same company he was working for. What happened? That truck was in a collision with a gas truck. I don't know whose fault it was, really. It don't matter in that case. It was driven by that very man who just a few minutes earlier said he didn't need God. He could buy things on credit and have it paid off like that. He got out of his rig and walked over. And there he set all the remains of that man burnt to a crisp. laying over the truck. Hell is real. The Bible says as the point of the man wants to die after this judgment, after hell, comes the day called the white throne judgment. You find it in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. You read about it in Philippians chapter 2, 9 through 11, where it says, Wherefore God hath given them a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. I'll tell you this morning, there will be people like that man who died in that truck accident and went to hell. They'll be at that white throne judgment, bowing, saying, Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what? He's going to stand before God and everyone else who's never known Jesus give an account. I believe every sin they have ever committed will be brought out before the whole world and they will be cast into the lake of fire where they'll suffer day and night forevermore. It says in Revelation chapter 20, 13 through 15 and Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. This morning, do we need God? Yes, man needs God because of hell and the judgment. God, one another reason? Because God has made the way of salvation. 
You know, we cannot save ourselves. As it says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's not anything we can do to be sa to, to save ourselves. Uh, amen. When Jesus presented a new birth in John chapter 3, he didn't present it to a harlot. He didn't present it to a drunkard. He didn't present it to a publican. He presented it to probably the most just man in Israel that day and age named Nicodemus. What did he tell Nicodemus when he acknowledged that Jesus was a man sent from God? You know what he said? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 Verse 7 says, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. He was talking to a just man, a Pharisee, probably in that day and age. He was probably looked on as one of the most just men in, the, that, in Israel. But what did Jesus say? He said, ye must be born again. <clears throat> that was to a just man. There's no way we can save ourselves. We gotta have Jesus. The Bible says John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died for us. He died for a whole world. Everybody who's ever lived, he died for their sin. Romans chapter five verse eight. But God commended his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. He died for me. He died for every person out there. Amen. He died for our sins. He died in our place. He was our, the one that took our place on Calvary. He not only died, but he rose again. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10 says... But for thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believe unto righteousness, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's through his death on Calvary and him rising again that we have eternal life uh, if we only take it by faith. Amen. He is our advocate with the Father. These things write out unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. He is our mediator. And he's a go-between, our lawyer with the Father. Amen. As it says, Second, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. There is one God and only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. This morning... What do you need to do? First off, you have to recognize your need, that you're a sinner. Secondly, you need to be sorry for your sin. The Bible says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, five, 3 and 5. Acts chapter 7, I mean 30, verse, chapter 17, pardon me, verse 31. God hath commanded all men everywhere to repent. And then by faith we receive him. The Bible says, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even as many as that believe on his name, John 1, 12, Revelation 3, 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. One last point. This is both for the sinners and the righteous. God answers prayer. I acknowledge there's only one prayer of a sinner man. God is obligated to answer. What's that prayer? The prayer of repentance. This morning, if you'll fall on your knees and ask Jesus, the Savior, tell the Lord, I'm sorry I have sinned. I'm a horrible sinner and I need your salvation. That's Jesus in. You can guarantee he'll hear that. 
His nature is the answer prayer. Psalm 65, verse 2. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. After you're saved, you can have a prayer answer in God. He may not always say yes to every prayer. I'm sure there's times my prayers are just nothing more than unloading it to God. Sometimes he said yes. Sometimes he said no. Sometimes he said wait. I tell you, God's delays are not always his denials. His delays are not always his denials. I've been praying about some things for over 20 years now. But I'm still holding on. Believe in God for that. I've been praying for some souls for years. They're still not saved. You say, why don't you quit praying for that person? I'll tell you why. As long as there's breath, there's hope. Only if God himself tells me through the Spirit, I'm going to stop praying. We need to keep praying on, don't we? Amen. Ask and it shall, ask and it shall be given. Seek ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. This morning, we need God. We all need God. I don't care, sinner friends. I don't care, backslider. How many times you've said you don't need God. We all need God. I could have dealt with a lot of other issues like the soon coming of our Savior. <clears throat> I could have dealt with other issues why we need God. But each and every one of us, it takes a fool to say, I don't need God. We we'll often quote that verse and Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, and Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool of said in his heart, there is no God. We talk about the atheist. Yes, it's a fool that's an atheist. But did you know it really? I, 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 there is. It's in italics. So they could have easily read, be reading like this. The fool of said, no God. The man say no to God when he said, offers him salvation. The one that says no to God when God deals with him to do certain things. You know, this morning, it's the fool who says no to God. Regardless of whether you're an atheist, whether you're an agnostic, whether you believe there is a God, whether you even agree with all that I've said here this morning from this black book, the Holy Bible, this morning, you say no to God that you're not saved and there are people who are not saved who believe the Bible or claim to believe the Bible I've heard testimonies of preachers who preached the gospel for years and one day realized they weren't saved themselves this morning if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord why not ask him to come into you your heart this morning. God bless you.